Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be pretty different and I'm very excited for it. So today's video is actually going to be on scoliosis surgery. So as you guys may know, I've never actually had scoliosis surgery. I've only been wearing back braces, so I never wanted to make a video about it since I didn't want to give you guys any false information. And I've actually been getting quite a few comments and questions about scoliosis surgery. So I am so, so happy that I'm going to be collabing with Caroline. She's a YouTuber and has had scoliosis surgery. So I'll basically be interviewing her and asking her some questions that I have actually already gotten so hopefully this video will be helpful to all of my viewers who have had surgery or is going to have surgery since i know that i haven't been too helpful for you guys since i've only been making back brace related videos so caroline's instagram and youtube channel will be linked in my description below so make sure to go subscribe to her and go follow her on instagram since she so kindly let me interview her for this video um again big thanks to caroline hi guys so sorry for the bad lighting but i really wanted to quickly add before we start the interview a quick disclaimer so basically caroline's case did actually have complications which means that her experience is kind of worse than what a normal scoliosis surgery experience is normally like so I just wanted to make sure you guys know that Caroline's case was definitely worse than what a normal case is like so I will be trying to interview people who have had scoliosis surgery and who have had no complications but I also think it's very important to show you guys what a surgery is um, that has complications just because you guys should know you know what what could be the worst things that could happen during a surgery not that uh, Caroline's case was the worst case scenario but Caroline's case was was definitely not the best case scenario so I just wanted to clear the air make sure you guys know that to not scare you guys too much if that makes any sense but yeah anyways sorry for interrupting back to the video hi my name is Caroline I recently started a YouTube channel I found Emma through Instagram and I absolutely love her content I think she is amazing. I also do some videos on scoliosis, but some videos on chronic pain and more like the lifestyle of living with chronic pain and my experiences in my life thus far. I actually just filmed a video with my best friend all about uh, disabilities in the workplace and what it's like working with chronic pain. Thank you again for letting me interview you. I think your experience is for sure going to help other teenagers that are gonna have surgery um, that have questions. Yeah, no, I think it's just a great idea. When I started my Instagram account because it was kind of over, you know, probably like a month into quarantine, I just realized like how much I have gone through. When I was looking at the hashtags, you know, scoliosis and everything, I saw your video on like how to style your brace. And I just remember being in middle school and doing everything in my power to hide my brace. And the fact that like, you know, you got to style it and make it cute was just like, oh. So what were your curves uh, before surgery? I was diagnosed at school, I think most, this is most people's story at least. When I was first diagnosed, it was like 18 degrees. I went to Walter Reed Hospital, which is where I had all my work done. And they were like, well, you don't really need a back brace. Um, it's just 18 degrees. You know, it's like 20 to 25 that we would suggest bracing. And um, my mom was super adamant. She was like, she's not done growing. We really need this back brace. And so, the doctor went ahead and made it. Even with my back brace, it still got up to around 60 degrees. I was not as diligent with my back brace as I think you were. <laughs> I loved sleeping in it. Honestly, like I had so much back pain when I was not wearing it. So it went up to 60 degrees, even with uh, bracing at I think 80% of what I should have worn. Wow, okay. So you mentioned how you got diagnosed at school. I, I didn't get diagnosed at school, I got diagnosed at a hospital. That's actually something that I've always been interested in, like early detection screening at school. Can you tell me more about it? So I remember it was like, uh, we had a week before, we had permission slips because you do have to wear your bra and it was in the women's locker room. So no guys or anything and the guys did it in theirs. Um, but we had the school nurse and our gym teacher and uh, we would all get in a line and um, we would lift up our shirts and then bend down and we would have to put our hands together like this and then um, the nurse would be right behind and then they would just check um, if your ribs were really, if there was any uh, hump. Yeah, that's really interesting. I really wanna, I hope, I, like my school that doesn't have early screenings, I wanna like have more schools that have early screening detection because I think it's so, so important because it, it, it can like avoid surgery. Not that it's like, surgery is a terrible thing, but like, you know, it, it's always cool if you can avoid it. It's 
traumatic. It's, it's, the surgery is a lot. So did you do any physical therapy uh, before surgery? Not before surgery, but I was super active. I was a three sport athlete. I did cross country. No one should do long distance running if they have serious back issues, but I played basketball, which I loved basketball. I wasn't very good at it, but I loved it. And um, lacrosse and lacrosse was probably the most painful for my back. All of those things probably weren't fabulous and I should have done physical therapy and I suggest it to anybody that, uh, that has it now. Mm -hmm. So what went into the decision of having surgery? You talked about sports, so was it for sports? Um, no, my sports life definitely died after I had surgery. In middle school when I was diagnosed, I don't know what it was. I just kind of always knew I was going to have the surgery. Like, I think I had just accepted it. I always just viewed it as like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the surgery and then I will have a straight spine and I will look normal. With every checkup and every x-ray, it just kept getting worse. And I think the scariest appointment was the appointment for pre-op when you get your blood work and everything to make sure you know you have good levels and they, there's nothing done to surprise them during the surgery. The doctor's telling me there are risks to the surgery, you know, paralysis, and he was very harsh about everything. There was no bedside manner and he wasn't my normal doctor. He was very much trying to deter me from surgery, but I was very adamant because I was in so much pain all the time. My curvature had, you know, gotten up to in the 60s. My nerves were actually getting pinched and my legs would kind of give out. There was a mass amount of pain that was associated with my decision and I had always pretty much been in pain with my scoliosis, um, which I know is not some people's reality with the diagnosis, but it was for me. And so, yeah, I just always accepted that, yeah, I'm gonna have it. So I did, I had a pre-surgery party and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So you talked about your pre-op appointment. Can you maybe like explain more about like that whole process before surgery? I think I've blacked out some of them. Like I have blocked out parts of my memory when it comes to this, but the pre-op and everything, lots of x-rays. Um, I remember having an MRI beforehand. I had a few MRIs and mostly just a lot of blood work and the, the scary doctor telling me everything that could go wrong. But really that was that was pretty much it. They gave me like a patch to put behind my ear. It's a super highly traded drug for compliance. It helps you not have anxiety or panic before the surgery. That patch was I think the most important. Yeah, like were you more like happy or more like nervous? Like what were your emotions before the surgery? I was pretty excited because my curvature was so noticeable. Mine was a, a C curve because with the C curve and it was so extreme that I was very, if my hips were faced this way, my body was literally faced and I have a very, I had a very high rotation. So if my legs were this way, my body was faced this way and I was very much a ajar this way. I really hated that. I felt very unattractive and it really affected my self-confidence and I viewed the surgery as a fix to that. You know at 16 I didn't, I did not really weigh the um, complications that could come from surgery which did happen although I didn't necessarily like think out all the realities of it. It was still the right decision. I'm still so happy I did it because I think it just would have gotten worse. Yeah, yeah I understand you like about the insecurities because I have like a little hunchback obviously. I've always been really insecure about that and I've actually like uh, at a point in my life I actually was thinking about having surgery uh, just because I really really hated that hunchback. Yeah, are you still getting checkups and making sure that it's not progressing? I'm gonna get my checkup I think in six months, something like that, just to see if everything's going well, just to make sure that, you know, my curve's not progressing. But there's obviously, obviously still a chance that I need surgery. So uh, what type of surgery did you have? I don't know if I, I might be wrong, but like, isn't there like different types of surgeries you can have for scoliosis? I only know of the spinal fusion surgery. There may have been new technology out, um, but I have rods and screws. And how long was the recovery process after it? Well, my surgery did not go well. It was supposed to be like six hours and it took like 12. I kept bleeding. They didn't know this. I have a blood clotting 
disorder, which you would only ever know if you cut my muscles. And I needed uh, two blood transfusions. And because of that, they weren't able to rotate me as much as they wanted to. They were able to fix some of my rotation, but not fully because of the complications. I was doing well after the procedure, like on day three, and I was in a ton of pain though. And a physical therapist came to the room and she wants me to sit in this like new type of chair that's supposed to like stretch you for you or something. And it was very painful and I was not polite and I cussed her out, which Sorry, lady, but then she refused to work with me anymore. When I got out of that crazy chair contraption, a drain of mine had popped out and they looked at the bag and they were like, oh, she's pretty much done draining anyways and did not put my drain back in. And so um, two days after that, I had a huge decline. I was not able to sit up anymore or stand up. I kept screaming and saying that like they put a backpack on me. I was like, somebody please take off my backpack. It's really heavy. And then they were like, Caroline, you're not wearing a backpack. And I just, you know, it was impossible. And my mom stayed with me the whole time. I ended up being in the hospital for um, almost 20 days. The whole time the nurses, I guess, had come to the conclusion that um, I was being a baby. Ever since I was a kid, I don't use it now, but, um, I really liked my dad's gym shorts. They were silky, like that's what I called them when I was a kid. And I'd always rub them like this. Um, and it just always like, you know, lessened my anxiety as a child. It was like a really big coping mechanism. Um, just same as a kid has like a blanket or something. After my surgery, my dad brought that to the hospital just as a cute thing, but I really, really loved it. And I think that they viewed that as me being a baby. They told my mom that they need, she needs to stop babying me, um, that I should be healed or on my way out by now. And I wasn't, and um, they were just really blaming me, they weren't helping my mom at all. Like my mom was wringing out like hot rags, trying to put heat on me. But the doctor was making rounds on day 16 and my mom asked to see him and he came in and he came out in a different time of day. He normally came in the morning, but it was in the afternoon. And the sun was, uh, I rolled over and the sun was coming in differently and my back spasmed and my whole back rippled. And he was touching it and there was fluid. There was two liters of blood and fluid pushed on my back in between my muscle and my skin. So that was what was preventing me from walking or healing or be even being kind to people. So then I went into surgery two hours later after they found that like immediately. And I remember getting a CAT scan and laying on, it's like really hard what you lay on. And I remember having to lay on that with my giant fluid filled back <laughs> and just like screaming and they're telling me to like, you know, be really still. And then after I had that, I felt so much better. It was like an immediate, the next day I was walking around the pediatric wing with my walker. Two days after that, I was ready for discharge. They were super disorganized with my discharge, unfortunately. The physical therapist who had stopped working with me, she never sent another one. So getting into the car was impossible. I couldn't fit um, because my neck, you know, now I can move my neck and everything, but after surgery, you're very stiff and I'm tall. I didn't fit into the car. <laughs> and nobody was there to help us. So I ended up having to stay another night at the hospital and then they gave us a physical therapist person the next morning who taught me how to get in and out of a car. So my next question was just kind of similar. What was like your recovery process after you got discharged? It was, it was a lot. Like I know that going on walks around my neighborhood was really, really challenging. I did start school with everybody else. I had my surgery in the summer, August 4th. I could only stay at school for up to like three periods max. I would bring a little pillow with me <laughs> to all my classes because you know, the chairs are terrible. My dad would have to come and bring me my pain medicine. It was also difficult managing the pain medicine. My parents were really um, meticulous with, they had a calendar that they made and then they printed it out and they put my pills on the time slots. 
that I could take them. So it was all very organized. I remember I got uh, sick halfway through homecoming and I threw up in the middle of the dance um, just from the pain and like the, the pain medicine also affects your stomach lining and it makes digesting food very difficult. And I was definitely excused from gym class. Most of the physical therapy that I've done, cause I don't go anymore, um, I went for about two years after my surgery. Most of it is really like isometrics, core strengthening, learning how to hold your, your core in and isolate it. And that's pretty much like, I don't want to say that is physical therapy because I am not a doctor, <laughs> but that's, that's mostly everything that I did in physical therapy. You know, you ask the question, would you still do it? And was it worth it? Yeah, I would still do it. And even knowing everything I know and how much I had to go through, I would still do it. And I think that that's a pretty powerful thing considering it was so traumatic um, that most people's experiences is not that insane. I think I'm, you know, not the only one of course, but one of the more few that aren't out of the hospital within a week and don't have a very structured healing process. And so how long did it take for you to come back to your spores? Like how long, how, how long did it take for life to be quote unquote like back to normal in a way? I would say like six months. Six okay. months and I was able to actually like stay the whole day through school. So um, I know that you, you kind of already answered the question I think, but um, like were you happy after your surgery? Like why were you happy maybe? And did you ever have regrets of getting the surgery? My happiest moment was I remember um, when you first wake up from being under, I asked my mom what my curvature was and she said that it was um, less than 10, which now it's gone up, which is also another reason I'm so happy I got the surgery because even with my spinal fusion, my, my curvature is still increased. That was like the happiest moment. I remember crying and going back to sleep. I think that was the moment that I was just like, it was worth it. So now that it's been about 11 years since you've had your surgery, um, how does scoliosis affect your daily life? And are you still in a lot of pain? Yes, I am always in pain. Again, it's still, I think, better than what it would be if I did not get the surgery. My last question, I think, is do you have any advice for uh, people that wear, wear back braces or people that are going to have surgery, just any teenager that you know has scoliosis and is gonna have uh, these treatments? Yes, definitely. My first year having the back brace, I was so embarrassed about it and I tried to hide it and um, after the second year I no longer cared if people saw it and I actually started wearing it outside of my t-shirts. I did not care anymore and I was so over it and I think that allowed me to have so much freedom knowing now 11 years later or even more years later after my bracing um, it didn't matter <laughs> like um, it, I should have worn it all the time. I should have worn it exactly how the doctor told me to wear it. What other people think of you does not matter. Like it absolutely has, it shouldn't have any effect on you. And that's something that I've had to learn in my early twenties too, working and working with a disability and, you know, having to use what's called FMLA where you have protected leave off. If I woke up and I was in too much pain to go to work, I was allowed to call off. But my coworkers knew that and all made fun of me for it because I don't look like I'm disabled. And I let their opinions of me almost destroy me. Wearing a back brace only makes you have more empathy for other people. And I feel like dealing with what we've dealt with only allows us to have a bigger heart and to be more accepting of others. So although it is a um, quote unquote disability, I think it actually really helps us in the long term. And that's why I decided to start my own YouTube channel. Um, and I use the, the term decoded because um, I've been in therapy for like two years. And then I realized how much of my life I have not processed. And, the scoliosis and learning disabilities and people treating me unfairly at work based on my disability. I was, you know, wondering about it all and I was like, I'm kind of decoding my past and I'm figuring out why I do the things I do. And so that's why I just started to start my own YouTube channel, kind of about the lifestyle of living with chronic pain 
and scoliosis and, and those things. When I was younger and when I was your age, this is all I wanted was to be able to find content like yours and what I'm trying to build now. And I wish that when I was 15, 16, that someone had been like, it's okay to be sad. And it's okay to be like, yeah, this sucks. Um, but it's something that's gonna make you stronger and gonna make you so much more relatable and um, that much better of a partner to your partner when you grow up. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you guys liked this type of video. I definitely am thinking of doing more interviews in the future, maybe interviewing doctors. I don't know, we'll see. This was honestly so fun to make. Thank you so much again to Caroline for letting me interview her. I'm really hoping this is gonna be helpful for some of you guys. And even if you're not planning on having surgery, I'm sure that this video can be so helpful to you since you know you never know. I still might need surgery in the future. Nothing's 100% sure. So hopefully this video was helpful. Um, again, thank you to Caroline. All of her links will be in the description below so make sure to go follow her on instagram and go subscribe to her channel i guess that's in this video thank you guys so so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and you want to watch more feel free to subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified for my new videos so yeah that's the end of the video thank you guys so so much for watching bye